Hello and welcome to Spartan Sports Report. I'm Justin Allegri. San Jose State football now 1-5 and five following the loss on the road to UNLV. We'll recap that game with San Jose State head coach Brent Brennan and preview the rivalry matchup with the Bulldogs here inside SefQ Stadium this weekend. Plus, we'll take a look at volleyball in the start of Mountain West Conference play with their head coach Jolene Shepardson. But first, let's go back to Las Vegas for some highlights. San Jose State taking on UNLV, and the Rebels haven't beaten the Spartans since 1994. On their first drive of the game, though, after a quick timeout from San Jose State, Armani Rogers, the redshirt freshman quarterback, takes it in for the first score of the evening. It was 7-0 UNLV. After that, though, the Spartans answered with a field goal, the 17th consecutive field goal made from Bryce Crawford, making it 7-3. But right back to work, Rogers once more. Almost looks like the same play, rolling off to his right side and then dodging some tacklers and pouncing into the end zone for the second touchdown of the evening. They were on top 14-3, and they continued to move the ball. And Lexington Thomas, one of the best running backs in all of college football this year, would race for the score from 56 yards away, his eighth rushing touchdown of the season. They weren't done, though, in the first half. Now they toss it out to the near side and off to the races. Another touchdown for UNLV, this time from Presley. And uh, UNLV with four scores early on. Now the Spartans tried to answer, uh, but they were forced to a three and out. Then a blocked punt here. Second consecutive week, the Spartans have had a punt blocked. Uh, and this one gave a golden opportunity once more to an already big lead for UNLV, and they would convert once more with Thomas right along the goal line, fighting for extra yards, and he gets the scrum yardage to get into the end zone for the touchdown. Spartans, though, responded late in the first half. Jaquan Blackwell over the middle from Josh Love, and he was in for the touchdown. And Josh Love really did throw the ball well in this game, over 300 yards passing. And the Spartans went into the locker room at halftime, trailing UNLV. In the second half, the Spartans came out, and Love tried to move the offense once more, but a nice interception over the far side. It was picked off by UNLV, their first interception of the game, and that set up another scoring drive for the Rebels, capped off here by a nice little toss into the end zone to the backup tight end for the score. Rebels extending that lead big time at home. Meanwhile, the Spartans again get Josh Love, and just outside the red zone, Love kind of takes a shot to the end zone. Good look, just a bit underthrown maybe, and good positioning by the UNLV defender who grabs it for the interception, the second of the game for the Rebels. Uh, they were continuing to be in control. Then late in the game in the fourth quarter, it is Tyler Nevins who had a great game, but he coughs it up right at the goal line just before he could break the plane for the touchdown. Another turnover for San Jose State on the fumble, and that would be just about it for the Spartans. They go down to Las Vegas and lose to the Rebels. 41 to 13, the final score. Spartans now just one and five this year, 0-2 in Mountain West Conference play. Josh Love did mention that uh, the offense moved pretty well in this game. He was 30 of 48, both career highs for him in completions and attempts. 315 yards, a touchdown, and a couple of interceptions. Tyler Nevins emerged as a pretty good running back option for the Spartans in this game. 17 carries for 94 yards, and then Trey Walker, not pictured was over 100 yards receiving in the game, eight receptions for 104 yards. But the combination of Rodgers and Thomas for the Rebels combined for four of their touchdowns. Devontae Boyd, also not pictured, one of the best wide receivers in the conference, 105 yards. And oh, by the way, Frank Ginda with another good night. He now continues to lead the NCAA in total tackles with 87. All right, we'll step aside here on Spartan Sports Report. When we return, Jolene Shepardson, the head coach of the volleyball team, will join us to talk about the start of Mountain West Conference play. That's to come after this. Round excellence in men's and women's collegiate competition. Every division, every sport, the Learfield Directors Cup. The prestigious award continues its reign as the crowning achievement in college athletics. To follow your favorite team, like us on Facebook, find us online and on Twitter. The Learfield Directors Cup. 
Welcome back here on Spartan Sports Report. We're inside our Spartan Sports Report studio, joined by Jolene Shepardson, the volleyball coach here at San Jose State. And Coach, gosh, off to a great start this yeah. year uh, for, for this team. And I know you've had hot starts in the past mm -hmm. couple of seasons, uh, but it really has gone through to the yeah, month of, of October now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so talk about maybe um, the hot start first and foremost, but then what's different about this year? Uh, well, we have a little bit of maturity on our, our team and some upperclassmen that are really stepping into their roles and and uh, I think they trust themselves more this year more than ever and we have a strong squad and we have some depth mm -hmm. in our program so good things are happening 11 and 4 overall yeah. 3 and 1 in Mountain West Conference play and yeah. uh, it, it's it's been this transition I know I've talked to you in years past where you say we have the personnel it's just going to take some time yeah, to turn things so, around do you yeah. do you feel this is the year where you can kind of say this this is the personnel i want on the court yeah. this is the year we turn the corner <laughs> that's what we hope right uh we gotta we still gotta execute in the yeah. end uh, yeah. we definitely have some talented players and coming together we've been working on it for a couple of years now and i think they're really starting to see uh, what they're capable of doing and execute it consistently well, yeah, and I know uh, second best team in hitting percentage in, in yeah. the conference this yeah. year. That you you get a smile out of that. <laughs> so so on the court, I know you talk about maturity, but mm -hmm. in terms of gameplay, mm -hmm. what has been different? What what is attributed to the wins? Uh, chemistry, I would say. There's uh, good communication going on out there. The, we finally have some players that have played together for a couple years, so the chemistry is gelling. It's mm -hmm. going, and they're. They're communicating through the struggles they face across the net. We come up with a game plan and, and things change. You know, we have some talented teams that we've competed against in preseason and now in, in conference. And so we have to make adjustments within the set and they're able to to take that in and communicate through it. Well, you know? and I would imagine with, with the amount of wins now uh, and with the players that you do have, mm -hmm. recruiting becomes a little bit easier. You can kind of sell San Jose State a little bit more. Yeah. Um, and, and that's how you start to get things flowing, right? Yes, yeah. Uh, so talk about the recruiting process. Oh, we have some talented kids, uh, some talented student athletes coming in for the next couple of years. And I do attribute to our players that have come in and, and developed a strong culture amongst mm -hmm. our, our program. Uh, they bought into the vision that I had here mm -hmm. for this program and they're really starting to execute and that raises the, the recruiting as we are going to get some some local talent in the next couple years. Yeah. Uh, can't mention those and so sure. they signed that NLI but we have some very young talented uh, recruits up and coming. We do have some milestones to discuss, and Anjala Gama obviously has been a great player for San Jose State. Mm -hmm. She's 46 kills short of being the 14th player in program history to 1,000. Yeah. So maybe kind of put that into a context. To if, if somebody's not a volleyball fan, mm -hmm. you know, the consistency mm -hmm. that is required right. to get to a number like that. Right, right. She, uh, thankfully, she's been a consistent starter for us, but we, you know, throughout the years have had injuries, so she's played in different roles for mm -hmm. us. and finally been able to come into her her true position and really developed actually she's been playing middle and right side for us mm -hmm. and we're getting the ball to her we're able to develop our offense where we can get her the ball more often and and that's not an easy milestone and and Brian Robinson has actually accomplished some milestones here with her assist per set getting the ball to Nanjiala yeah. so uh, it's a quite a duo uh, they, both of them were able to go to the Mountain West Global Challenge together mm -hmm. this past summer, mm -hmm. so that was kind of a nice little advantage um, working together over the summer. Also, we went to Brazil together, so this past summer. There's a lot of benefits going into the season, and uh, I'm thankful they're, that's it's paying off. Yeah, Brianne, 2,000 assists, which is one of 12 yes. players at San Jose State history. So maybe you mentioned uh, the, the Mountain West Challenge and then the trip to Brazil. Uh, yeah. Talk about maybe how, how the team molded and, and, and transitioned that into yeah. the start of the year. Huge. I'm really thankful for that opportunity because uh, it allowed us to work out some things through the summer in our, in our offense and our defense and just have more opportunities mm -hmm. together. Uh, on and off the court, right? Yeah, That's, yeah. That, yeah. that kind of experience is unforgettable. Mm -hmm. I mean, they created memories they'll never forget. And, and it, it carries over onto the court, and we're seeing good things come out of that. Uh, like I said, the communication on the court, the chemistry on the court is as strong as ever. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we brought in a couple key players to help with that, mm -hmm. and having that opportunity over the summer in Brazil. Yeah. Uh, thankful to our donors and everybody who helped 
make that happen, huge, huge advantage. Uh, and I just want to build off that and build off these wins and, and keep going. Well, you can keep going this weekend. Spartan fans, you'll have a chance to see them at home. You've been on the road for a little while, yes. <laughs> uh, but two matches here at home this weekend on Thursday and Saturday, mm -hmm. uh, first Mountain West Conference matches at home yes, uh, yeah. this weekend. So talk about uh, the, the Lobos and, uh, and the Rebels of UNLV. Well, we face the Rebels on Thursday first because uh, that's the way it's, it rolls. So come out Thursday night to support us. We've done great on the road, but our home is where we're definitely very comfortable. Mm -hmm. We love, our players love playing in front of our, our fans. And we've had some great uh, support in the preseason here. And mm -hmm. we're looking forward to those Spartan fans coming out Thursday night. And then on Saturday, we uh, have to play in the afternoon at noon on Saturday. And then we're going in, into hopefully a win and that's go right. with support football right after. So. Uh, great weekend. Um, excited to be home. Mm -hmm. Our players are looking forward to uh, being in, just seeing friends and family in the stands yeah. is what our players love. And like I mentioned, we had good support. So I think our, our young ladies are ready to perform for everyone. All right, you can check them out this weekend, Thursday and Saturday. The volleyball team returns to Spartan Gym inside YUH. That's the head coach, Jolene Shepherdson. Thanks so much, coach. Yeah, thank you. Take another break here on Spartan Sports Report. More after this. Ready, Tim? Let's do this. Was that Mike? That's Harry. The car stopped for me. And that's automatic emergency braking. The Nissan Rogue family take on today. Bottom line, they still can't touch you. <laughs> I'll take it. Get to Nissan, proud supporter of college <laughs> athletics. Welcome back here on Spartan Sports Report. We're now joined by San Jose State Head Coach Brent Brennan. And, and Coach, before we get into football here, last week we talked to you. The last time we talked to you on this on this show, uh, you, you were masking something, weren't you? You, you? you had to leave early. You were telling Adam and me, hey, uh, we, we, I got to cut out of here. It's all right. I'll see you guys next week. Uh, and, and then we come to find out uh, Ellen DeGeneres has something to do with that very thing. So uh, obviously a, a great uh, a deal of attention for the program in, in a good way. Uh, but talk about that. I know you didn't get a chance to comment on it on the TV show last week. No, it was a really awesome thing that happened with with uh, Ellen and, and her people. You know, we had been kind of talking to them a little bit before leading up to it. And uh, it was almost like kind of like Skype interviews about Coach Carter beyond football, what we're doing with our team here with the with that program. And so... Uh, it, it's incredible. Like everybody you talk to from the Ellen show, it's the most positive, enthusiastic yeah. group of people I've ever encountered. Like, it's not surprising to me that their show is such a success. Very genuine. Yeah, yeah. it's so it's so positive. And so I was dealing with all these people. I'm like, where do you guys come from? You know, like, <laughs> it's like the world needs more of that. Right. And uh, and then it accelerated. And they and they so they reached out and told me what was happening. So then I they kept us in a really small loop. Right, we mm -hmm. couldn't tell anybody they didn't want coach carter or the players to know so um i was just just choking yeah. on it for yeah. for like four or five days and uh cam radford had to know marie to had to know and then they told me i could tell my wife <laughs> um which and she's pretty trustworthy so um but yeah so i ran out of our interview last week and uh, ran over here to the field and and uh the reaction was incredible from the players yeah. and it was funny I knew it, it was going to happen, but I didn't know quite how it was going to happen. So when she popped up and it was, here we go, mm -hmm. it was it was an amazing moment. And you didn't know any any monetary donations that was going to be handed out at that point in time either. No, well I knew that they were they were trying to figure out some way to help, and so um, they were because we had to check with compliance and we had mm -hmm. to make sure if there was anything like that. And so that was the easiest way to have the biggest impact on our program and the community here in San Jose. Well, Coach, uh, and the Spartans go down to, to Las Vegas and, and obviously take a, a tough loss down there. But uh, positives from that game, I, I thought the offense looked better than, than it had been in a, a few weeks and obviously moving the ball very, very effectively down there. Talk about the offense and, and the process from that game. You know, I, I was really excited about how Josh Love played. You know, um, I know he had the two picks, 
you know, they're both hard plays. One of them, you know, there's the safety made a great play. And then another one, you know, we talked about it with Jaquan. He needs to try and break that up because Josh left the ball a little inside. Um, but it was great to see him move the ball down the field, distribute the ball really well. Um, obviously, we, ha- we got some great running game from freshman Tyler Nevins yeah. and some of our other running backs, and the offensive line did a good job. And so that was, you know, a really good moment for us offensively. Um, in a game, we finally, you know, had more offensive plays and we did defensive plays because our defense had played too many snaps so mm-hmm, far this mm-hmm. year. So that was a really good outcome of the game. Well, you, you talk about Tyler Nevins, and uh, we've been discussing needing a running back to kind of step up and be the guy to go to. And it seemed like for the first time this year, he was uh, the guy. And, and uh, you know, he's been in and out of the lineup uh, every once in a while. But talk about his performance and kind of the coming out party, I guess. Yeah, we're excited about Tyler, and we have been since he committed here a year ago or whatever last you know January February but um it was just exciting to see him get going and we'd seen glimpses of it in in practice and in in some small pieces in the games and um he's a physical back he's got a nice combination of you know size and and, and speed and uh just to get him kind of rolling Mm -hmm. and to to have a back where you hand it to him and he's getting chunks he's ripping off big runs um was kind of what we've been looking for and uh you know, but the truth of the matter is, I think we feel like we got four guys at that position that can play. Mm-hmm. Well, and then you also have Trey Walker come in and, and do a tremendous job. It seemed like the Spartans were going to him time and time again uh, for a good part of that game. So he comes in, steps up in the wide receiver position, and another new face for the Spartan fans to get to know. Yeah, no, we're excited about Trey as well. And Trey's a true freshman from Narbonne High School down in Southern California, Los Angeles, and one of the city schools there. And uh, he's just a really tough kid. It's really important to him, and uh, I think when you see him play, you see that. You see him fighting for extra yards. You see him blocking mm-hmm. downfield, um, and, and so I'm excited about that because it's always hard for freshmen to get used to the speed of the game. Everybody is so much faster. Right. Everything happens so much quicker, and so it's taken him a little while to settle in, but I'm hoping we're going to see a lot more of that from Trey. And the more reps he gets in game, right, the more you'll, you'll get that experience because you can't do that in practice. No, no, there's, there is no substitute for <laughs> real reps in a game reps. There is nothing – that helps you, you know, kind of accelerate your development better than playing in the game. Well, one guy that's getting a lot of game reps, uh, I know we've talked about him a lot this year already, but Frank Ginda, uh, put into context for us, a uh, hundred tackle season is is kind of the mark, the benchmark for right. any linebacker. Uh, he might be doing that in week seven coming right. up here, uh, and, and I mean, maybe you could paint that good or bad that he's out there make, having to make all these tackles, but at the same time, you got to make them. Uh, yeah. Put that into context where, where, where he's at at this point in the season, 87 tackles through six games. No, it's an incredible number, and, and I think, uh, you know, the, the reality is that, you know, your best players need to make plays, mm-hmm. and that's what Frank's doing. And so, obviously, we lean on him a lot in terms of his playmaking ability, but also his leadership, kind of his knowledge of the defense, his, his football IQ. But, um, you know, those numbers are, are crazy. Yeah. And, you know, it, you know, I think as we continue to develop in this defense, obviously some of that will get spread around a little mm-hmm. bit as our, you know, as our front line develops a little bit more and got a lot of young guys in there right yeah. now. You know, sometimes I look out there at our defensive line, I'm like, whoa, there's a bunch of babies in diapers out there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll take a quick break here with Coach Brennan, talk Fresno State and the rivalry when we return. Ready, Tim? Let's do this. Was that Mike? That's Harry. The car stopped for me. And that's automatic emergency braking. The Nissan Rogue family take on today. Bottom line, they still can't touch you. (laughs) I'll take it. Get to Nissan, proud supporter of college athletics. Honoring all around excellence in men's and women's collegiate competition. Every division, every sport, the Learfield Directors' Cup. The prestigious award continues its reign as the crowning achievement in college athletics. To follow your favorite team, like us on Facebook, find us online and on Twitter. The Learfield Directors' Cup. Welcome back here on Spartan Sports Report. We're continuing to talk with San Jose State head coach Brent Brennan. And coach, uh, I know you're very familiar with this rivalry, San Jose State and Fresno State, obviously as an assistant coach, but a new element to you perhaps uh, is the Valley Trophy. And and I know fans are very excited about the trophy. And talk about that uh, introduced into the rivalry and new for you as well. Well, I think it's just a really cool addition to it. You know, um, we were talking about it in our press conference earlier. I I think it's cool. You know, the Big Ten has all those trophies that they – they all change hands every year and everyone's battling. Every game has some sort of 
trophy attached to it. And I think it's cool that we have something like that here for, yeah. for the rivalry of the Fresno State game. Um, you know, obviously both of us being in California, both of us being from very different parts of California, it creates kind of a little extra emphasis on the on the game. Well, and off, also with that, it's homecoming. Uh, is there a different narrative uh, you, you talk to the team about with everything surrounding uh, outside of the game? You know, I, I really just want our kids to experience, you know, homecoming and all the special things that come with it. You know, we're going to be involved in the rally and and, and uh, the parade and all that stuff. And I, I just think it's important that they that they have that, you know, in terms of the game, you know, I'm hopeful that people come out to watch. I'm hopeful mm -hmm. that people will support these players and see kind of what we're trying to do here at San Jose State. And, you know, from our alumni, you know, all the way down to our students and faculty, I hope they'll really engage this weekend and, and enjoy a great homecoming football game right. here at SEFQ. Well, what responsibilities did the team have uh, with, with the fire on the fountain and everything like that? Are you going to get them out there with the students yeah. before oh, the yeah. game? Yeah, yeah, they'll be there. They'll be there. <laughs> you know, I think that's a really important part of it, you know. Um, you know, with our program, it's important that our kids are engaged in campus. Yeah. They're engaged in the things that other students are doing. And, you know, we've been really actively involved that way and we will continue to be. And I think this is just another example of where, um, you know, football players that may, may or may not have been present before, you know, we want them there and, and they want to be there. They, they want to engage that campus community. They want those kids to know that they're going to be part of their lives too. Mm -hmm. Well, Coach, it's a Fresno State team. They're in transition period as well. Coach Tedford comes in, obviously, with uh, with his background. Uh, pretty exciting times over at Fresno State. Talk about what he's been able to do in, in his first few weeks at the helm at Fresno State. You know, Coach Tedford is a fabulous football coach. And, um, you know, I had the opportunity to coach against him a couple times when he was at Cal and I was at Oregon State. I've always had just tremendous respect for him. Um, his teams are incredibly detailed, mm -hmm. very sound and they always play really hard. And so, you know, it's a great challenge for us. Obviously, we've had a tough start to our season. Um, we have this huge rivalry game coming in, and it's an opportunity for, for our guys to play. And, and they know what they're going to get. They know it's going to have the added intensity of the rivalry. Right. They know that they're going to be playing a team, you know, that is very sound on each side of the ball, is going to be very creative offensively. And so it's a, it's a great challenge for us. Well, and to top off that challenge, I know Spartan fans are familiar with Chase and Virgil at the quarterback position, but uh, a new element to, to their offense is something that, that's not new to you, Marcus McMarion, who comes down from Oregon State, a, a very late addition for Fresno right. State, uh, but, but he's now been inserted. It seems like he'll be the starter for this team. So talk about him and, and maybe the challenges uh, for, for that, that, that team to, to get a new quarterback in so late. You know, I, I think knowing that kid, I'm not surprised that he's making plays and doing a good job mm -hmm. for him. Uh, he's an incredibly diligent kid. He's a good leader. He's a good he's a good passer. He's got the ability to extend plays. He can run, um, but he he's an accurate passer first. And so I was there with Marcus for shoot four years, I think yeah. three and a half years, and uh, he's he's just an awesome kid. So I, I'm excited to see him have the success he had last weekend. Obviously, I'm hoping he doesn't duplicate it this weekend, but. Um, you know, I'm excited for him and I'm excited to see, you know, him make, you know, making the decision to leave and transfer is always a hard thing, but he wanted to play yeah. and, and he thought this was the best opportunity to play. And so far it looks like he's right. Right. Well, what do you think is his strength and, and what makes him a better quarterback than say Virgil was? You know, I don't know that because that's that's their decision to make and, and they're probably they're seeing all the film sure. and they got practice reps to look at and all that stuff. Um, just in my experience, experience with Marcus McMarion, he's a very accurate passer. Um, he's really great in the huddle. He's really calm. He doesn't panic. Mm -hmm. He doesn't freak out. He played in lots of big games for us at Oregon State. Uh, you know, we beat the we beat Oregon last year at the end of the season with him under center. And so, um, you know, I, I think you know, however it's worked out for them to make their decision. I, I just know what we're going to face is just an accurate passer right. who's very calm, cool, and collected, and he's going to be ready to go. All right, Spartans here at home inside SefQ Stadium for the rivalry game against Fresno State this Saturday. That's the head coach, Brent Brennan. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Take another break here on Spartan Sports Report. More to come after this. around excellence in men's and women's collegiate competition. Every division, every sport, the Learfield Director's Cup. 
The prestigious award continues its reign as the crowning achievement in college athletics. To follow your favorite team, like us on Facebook, find us online and on Twitter. The Learfield Directors Cup. Welcome back here on Spartan Sports Report. That does it for this week's episode. Once again, San Jose State football returns home inside SefQ Stadium against the rival Fresno State Bulldogs. This Saturday, 4.30 kickoff. Our coverage on 1590 AM KLIV and the Spartan Radio Network. That begins at 4 o'clock. If you want to come out to SefQ Stadium, we'd love to see you. Tickets are available at 408-924-7589 or sjsuspartans.com. That does it for us, though, this week. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.